Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuang. Today, let's draw the head of Spinosaurus. We can consider the head of Spinosaurus was composed of two parts, the slender snout part and the round and large rear part. When drawing its head, pay attention to the shape. The front should be thin and long. From the position where the teeth ended, the head suddenly became broader in the shape of a triangle. Besides, there are several things we should pay attention to. One is the growth direction of the teeth, which is a characteristic of Spinosaurus. When it closed its mouth, the upper and lower teeth could interlock together, so there would be a notch at the front of the upper jaw and a corresponding arc on the lower jaw. Therefore, around this bending area, its teeth radiated outward along this arc, and we need to be careful about the angle as well. Now, let's draw the head of Spinosaurus. When drawing the head, set an area for it first. For example, the rear part of its head ends here, and the front of its mouth ends here. We draw its mouth open, so the lower jaw could reach this point. And the top of the head should probably be drawn here. Once these reference points are located, we can start by drawing its mouth. The Spinosaurus mouth was quite slender. The front part of its mouth was relatively straight, so draw this part first. This was the maxilla. The upper part of the Spinosaurus snout consisted of two parts, one was the maxilla, and the other was the premaxilla, which was the front part. There was a big notch between the premaxilla and the maxilla, which helped it trap the fish while hunting. We can draw the teeth directly on the premaxilla. There were seven teeth on the premaxilla, the three in the middle were small. Among the other four, these two were larger, and the one at the foremost was relatively small. Then moving backward, there was a chain of teeth, which were arranged in an arc like a circular saw. The teeth at the front were also relatively small, with these to being the largest, and then they became smaller and smaller. The ones at the back of the mouth were very small. Now we continue to draw towards the back. This part is flat, but then it suddenly slopes down, because the head of Spinosaurus suddenly became very wide at the rear half. Then, we draw the front part of its upper jaw. Its eyes were located here. Now we draw one eye and leave a small area, as the highlight when drawing the pupil. There was a lacrimal horn above the eye. Between the lacrimal horns, there was a raised crest. The crest extended obliquely like this, The head top was connected with the lacrimal horn. Above its eyes, we can draw the raised brow bone. Then draw some soft skin around the eye. In front of the eyes were the ant orbital fenestry, which was soft. Next, let's draw the nostril. Since Spinosaurus was semi-aquatic, its nostrils were very close to the center of the mouth, not at the tip of the nose. Now let's draw its ear. Although there is no fossil evidence for the Spinosaurus ears, we speculate that they might be similar to those of a crocodile. The ears were behind the eyes. Just like modern crocodiles, the Spinosaurus eye, ear, a nostril might line up. In this way, it only needed two to lift its head a little for its nostrils to surface. Behind the ear, we draw the rear outline of its head. Now, let's draw its temporal fenestra. We can draw thicker muscles below the temporal fenestra. Next, draw its lower jaw, which was very thick at the cheek area, and covered with thick muscles. The 
mouth became slenderer towards the front. There was a structure bulging upward at the tip of the lower jaw. When it closed its mouth, this structure fitted right into the notch and acted like a pincer, tightly gripping soft prey such as fish in its mouth. Next, let's draw the teeth on the lower jaw. Note that there were five larger teeth at the front, which formed the shape of a gear wheel. Then draw its masseter muscles. We can draw parts of the neck behind the head and the muscles on the side. There might be some loose skin between the muscles and the neck. Then draw its throat. Below the throat, we can draw some folds or stripe-like scales like this. Good, we've finished drawing the head of Spinosaurus.